Hello everybody, welcome to Dundrawl's Podcast, I'm your host Justin. So we had, uh, I asked you guys to vote for uh, which book to review next, and we had like a tie, so I, I, I just, you know, randomly decide which one to do. <laughs> but like, next time we do a Marvel review, we'll do the other book, which uh, I, I picked Miss Marvel. Which this collects the uh, Miss Marvel tie-in books to Civil War by Brian Reed, and uh, mul- this book had multiple artists. Uh, I have no idea when this series originally printed, because apparently the 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 book this book was printed in 2015, and obviously Civil War was like. 2005 I think that's when that's when Civil War was going on I'm I, I definitely know it wasn't going on in 2015 that came much later and uh, this character was didn't get kind of popular until like 2015 so I think I think they just took some old issues and like uh, printed out in a trade but yeah like this book collects um this book collects Miss Marvel issues six through ten, and Miss Marvel special issue one, written by Brian Reed and illustrated by Roberto Della Torre, Mike Waringo, and Giuseppe Camincoli. So you can see Rogue on the back, which this obviously would have been like mid or early two thousands, because she look how Rogue is drawn. Rogue is drawn just like she looked in the X-Men Evolution cartoon. Which, that was like early 2000s, wasn't it? Which, I wasn't a huge fan of that cartoon. But, uh... Eh. I think, it, I think my problem with the cartoon... Even though I was like... I was... A teenager at that point. I wasn't like a fan of like... Oh, you just turned X-Men into teenagers. Except for Wolverine, of course. Alright. Yeah, so this book is about, obviously, the Civil War that was going on in Marvel when, uh, basically, if people don't know what Civil War was, basically, it was, what happened is the New Warriors, uh, were, was filming some kind of reality TV show while they were doing their, uh, superhero stuff, and screw up, screwed up really bad, and uh, a bus full of school children got killed, and that created outrage and made it so like oh that uh, Congress made a made a thing called the Superhero Registration Act, and because of that superhero human uh, superhero registration act, that created two factions with, with within superheroes. You had people like Iron Man who were in favor of it, and then you had people like Captain America who was against it, right? So obviously, Miss Marvel um, was joined Iron Man's camp and is going around because of her power set, which you know she's like strong, she can fly, she can have, she has energy projectiles and absorption that makes. Basically, she's like a flying tank, so obviously, she would be a good superhero to go and collect, like, catch all the unregistered superheroes. So one of the re- unregistered superheroes sh- she tries to catch is um, Prowler, right? Which, in uh, the Ultimate Universe, is uh, Miles Morales' uh, uncle, right? Yeah, so, like, other people on her team is Wonder Man, uh, Simon Williams, which I used to like Wonder Man, but, like, they turned him kind of, like, into, like, a wannabe actor. You also have the original Spider-Woman, Julia Carpenter, from the, um, from the Iron Man cartoon, which that was nice to see her in a comic book, because I... I'm not a huge fan of the Iron Man cartoon, but, like, you know, it wasn't too bad. So, like, the first story is basically, uh, you've, um, our, our team is going around c- catching superheroes, and it turns out that Spider-Woman 
or Arachne, as she's called, is actually working against... She's working for Iron Man, but really, she she only accepted the to work for Iron Man to warn to warn like superheroes, right? And one of the superheroes they're going after is Shroud, which is her boyfriend who helped her walk again, right? Yeah. So like, uh, also they introduced this teenage character called um, Arana. Which is this Latino, a Latina, uh, teenage superhero who is unregistered? Uh, they they find they find her at like at like a KFC ripoff that was getting robbed, right? That she worked at. So she she uh, Miss Marvel convinces her to join uh, the, their side, and what ends up happening is. Um, they go to, uh, arrest, uh, Arachne, Ar Ar aka the, the old, like, spider woman and her boyfriend, right, for, like, you know, for betraying, for betraying them, right, and also they, like, you know, they, 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 they defeated, like, um, S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, right, so that, which yeah, it is what it is, and like there's a there's a a, a scene that makes uh, Miss Marvel look bad where they go to arrest her in front of her kid because she tries to take her kid uh, out of America uh, out of the states right. So the 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 second story is basically here's Rogue by the way, which Rogue looks so cool in this issue. And then in the next arc, they they draw like the art sucks, and they draw it just like the Evo X Men Evolution arc. So what what happens in this arc is basically, um, she Der Carol Danvers goes to her uh, apartment, finds Rogue and this uh, Miss Marvel from another reality, who's called Warbird. And, like, they get into a fight with Rogue, right? And then you find out her story that this Warbird uh, screwed up and accidentally let her world get destroyed. And since then has been hopping to alternate realities, killing Rogues. Because if people don't know, uh, Rogue, the reason Rogue had her powers from the... Uh, in the X-Men animated uh, cartoon, which is based off the comics, is that Rogue stole Miss Marvel's powers and put her in a coma, right? So apparently that happened in all the realities, right? So she's been going around killing Rogues, right? And Miss Marvels that have gone in her way. And uh, what, what happens is that K Carol is a fucking bitch. And, uh, almost kills, almost kills, uh, Rogue, right? Because Rogue was getting in the way of the fight. So she decides to kick her in the, in the ribs, which breaks Rogue's ribs. <laughs> right? So, so she would stay out of the fight, which she almost kills her Miss Marvel. Like, uh, she almost kills Warbird, the, ul the alternate reality Miss Marvel, right? And this pisses off Beast, because Beast was around, right? And Beast is like, bitch, get the fuck out of the... Get the fuck out of the X-Mansion. <laughs> you stupid bitch. And she cries. It's like, bitch, you almost killed Rogue. <laughs> yeah, which it was... She was... She had, like, you know... Um, she had unresolved feelings over, like, being put in a coma. But still, man. Rogue was trying to help you out. So yeah, this this chapter is basically about you have this kid and his friend who is reading a book by um, Carol Danvers when she was a superhero called Binary, working with the Star Jammers, which is a space pirate crew. Uh, that's Cyclops' dad is in charge of Star Jammers, right? And his power is that basically. He can, uh, w when he reads stuff, he can kind of make, 
when he imagines stuff he reads, he can make it kind of come to life. Which causes the monster from that book to come to life. And C Carol Danvers has to defeat it. Right? And you find out the kid is like... Um, was an aim experiment. And that he, he doesn't actually have to use... He doesn't actually have to use books to create stuff. He can just like use his imagination. So yeah, that's the end of this book. So overall, I thought this was a decent read. But my problem with the book is the art is not great. You have kind of like an unlikable protagonist <laughs> with Carol Danvers. Even before she became Captain Mar Marvel, apparently she was... She's not that likable, <laughs> right? She fucking almost kills, like, Rogue, right? Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, so you have, like, the art kind of sucks in some of the issues. Miss um, Marvel's not a very likable character, right? But overall, I thought this was a decent read, and if you get, you can get it for cheap. You know, I would say it's, it's worth a read, right? I kind of liked the, uh, you know, I kind of liked the the tie-in to Civil War, right? And it was cool to see, like, uh, Spider-Woman, not the uh, slutty one <laughs> in a comic book, <laughs> right? The, the single mom one. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I enjoyed this book, and I would give it, it was a decent read, and I would give it, you know, a 6 out of 10. Not great, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Uh, for our next review, uh, I'm kind of running low on the indie stuff, which is indie is just not DC and Marvel. <laughs> I mean, I have a lot of non D, uh, non like indie stuff, but it's a thing where like I I I, I kind of want to focus on the stuff I haven't read yet. So we have, like, Batman 66 meets the Green Hornet, written by Kevin Smith and his friend Ralph Garman from that shitty Batman podcast, which is technically, this is co-published by Dynamite, so I'm, I'm counting this. And then the other choice is, uh, I think this is Titan Comics. This is a Robotech comic book. <laughs> Which is like a basically a retelling of the uh, Robotech series or Matt Cross, right? I f I forget when this came out. This probably isn't even in print, but yeah. So yeah, that's the other choice. They make um, Roy Foker's um, Veritech look pretty cool. Which I forget the name of it. I have, I actually have a mall kit of this. But what sucks about the mall kit is it's from the eighties, so it, it, it's old model kits. Not only do you have to paint them, but like they're they feel they they feel very fragile. So it's like, uh, yeah, I, I never finished it, but yeah, I do I do have a mall kit of this guy. I mean, I did I finished most of it. All right. Yeah, yeah. so that's the second choice, so vote in the comments if you want Batman meets the Green Hornet or Robotech. All right.